Thank you, Chef Darius, to, for being with us today. We are very, very glad to, uh, to host you today. So I am um, Alison. I'm a chef working in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, I've been here for almost three years now. I've been in the culinary for seven, eight years now. Eight years, I did all my, um, my culinary studies in France. Then I traveled, I went to the US, I went to Germany too. I uh, traveled a bit around the world and then I came back here for, at first for family reasons. And then uh, I found a job as a chef, so I decided to stay because I had, I had stuff to work and then to improve myself. So I decided to stay. So I've been here for like, uh, yeah, like I said, for almost two years. So I'm gonna let Francis introduce Uj and present what Uj is before I give you the the the, the microphone. So Francis, okay, please. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I, I I'm the founder of Uj. I, I don't like the big name like founder or, or CEO, but uh, <laughs> but I am the founder of or the thinker of Uj, and I start Uj uh, maybe 15 years ago in UK. It was uh, it, it should be it should be. Uh, a, a website about the restaurant, Afro-Caribbean restaurant in the world. But uh, 15 years ago, the, the, the restaurant uh, was, weren't uh, ready for this kind of, uh, of, uh, of tools. So now I restart uh, Uj uh, maybe uh, three months ago, and we start with some webinars, webinars about, uh, with the, the, the Afro-Caribbean chef. So we, we, made, we already made maybe 10 webinars uh, in French and English, and, uh, and we, 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 we already plan a lot of webinars, maybe three every month until the end of, uh, of uh, this year in English and uh, also in French. So now it is uh, the, the, the webinar of February in, uh, in English with uh, the chef Darius Nedge. I, 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 I've, I've been waiting for a long time to, to hear you and to, <laughs> to listen everything. So, okay, for me, it's finished. Yeah, you're, you're the first person that's actually pronounced my name right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to congratulate you on that. Everybody, even the English, will say niche, but it's not niche, oh, it's niche. niche. It's niche. <laughs> no, it's knitch. You pronounce the K? Yeah. In, yeah, in the English language, the K is silent. Ah, yeah, yeah, but uh, it's actually German. Yeah. yeah, I was about to ask if it was German, actually. I was about yeah. to ask that question. Yeah, I, I, I took my uh, wife's name. So uh, when we got married, instead of because I had two double barrel names, I had Darius James. So I, I changed it to Darius Knitch. Oh, wow. Don't worry, the family had an uproar. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, Chef Darius, can you tell us about yourself? Okay, about, I, yeah. I started cooking when I was eight years old. Uh, I've always loved cooking, always loved cooking. It's always been a passion of mine. Uh, I, when I, I knew exactly when I was eight years old what I wanted to be what is, when I grew up. And uh, I was determined to go through that, uh, all the hard work and all the hours, you name it, I went through it. Um, I started my first job at the Park Lane Hotel, which is now called, uh, I think it's called the Sherrington Hotel now. It was the first, in fact, it was the only public owned, um, private owned hotel in the Ritz uh, in the UK. And then uh, I think the guy, Sir Guy, he died and then the, the two sons sold the hotel on and it's had a number of change so far. That was my first, and uh, I started there uh, in 76. So you can see how long I've been in the industry, all right? And I love it. I really absolutely love it. Uh, I've traveled across the globe. Uh, I was in uh, Bali when the Bali bomb went off. Okay. I, I arrived th there and then on my honeymoon, and uh, they said to me, do you want to go back? I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I travel uh, the globe, I never go to where the tourists go. I always go to where the locals eat. Okay. Just to pick up ideas, 
which has inspired, inspired my way of cooking. I'm a big fan about spices and herbs. I don't like uh, heat. I like flavor more than heat. Uh, so if, if I'm doing a curry or something which got spices in it, I always try to balance the two together, the taste and the spice together. Uh, I've traveled in New Orleans in America. And yeah. I don't know if you know Brennan's. No. Well, in New Orleans, there's a famous restaurant called Brennan's. Uh, they do one of the best egg benedict you can ever taste in your entire life. <laughs> uh, I did a, a six months travel there. Uh, I also worked in Vermont in the English Curry of Art, which is a, basically it's a school which is run by students. Uh, they pay up to, I think it's 47,000 uh, US dollars just to be a student there. Uh, the only uh, people that's not student is the head chef, the head concierge, the manager, but everybody else is a student. The, the hotel is just run by students. And it's the best thing. If I ever had the money, that was what I would do, right? Because it shows people how to handle a bad situation and uh, when, they, when they're training up, because there's nothing like that in, the, in anywhere in the world at the moment, apart from there. Uh, I've also traveled San Francisco. I've done a, a six month tour from San Francisco to uh, New York via, uh, Texas, Alabama, New Mexico. My worst experience was Alabama. <laughs> yeah, why? Uh, they, 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 they still believe uh, a Caribbean people should be behind the bus, not on the bus. You know, they are way behind. It's don't don't get me wrong. We end up in a bar, and I was more welcome than the actual locals. It was a Ku Klux Klan bar, by the way. And I, there was, there was eight of us in the tour. You know, we, we hired one of the big uh, camper vans and we did a six months tour and we were going from state to state and we, we went all the way down to Miami and come back up to Philadelphia and everything. And uh, we ended up, that was, it was my turn to go, we, what we do, we have turn to buy drinks and it was my turn to buy the drink, the beers. And I end up, we end up in this bar. It was quite late. We end up in this bar, and the guy says to me, "Can't serve you, I'm afraid." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, fair enough." You know, I come all the way to the U to, to the US, you know, on tour, and he goes, "Oh, you're from the UK," and I was like, "Yeah," and I was more welcome, right, because of my accent, than actually the actual uh, um, American blacks themselves, right? And That's we crazy. stayed there until four o'clock in the morning, right, and we didn't buy one round of drinks was all offered it was all offered people were buying this dream because there was four brits and four americans right there was two brits that were black right and we because of our accent we were more welcome than actually the actual local which that is crazy that is an eye-opener isn't it yeah. when you look at it uh, you never think that is still going on like that till exactly today. <laughs> exactly behind closed doors you can actually see it yeah. goes on still uh, I've also, I've got a high profile client. I've worked for Wimbledon though, uh, for 15 years, Wimbledon Tennis. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, I was doing the Royal Rooms and uh, Rolex. Yeah. Biggest, biggest and the best move I've ever made in my entire career, All right? Uh, there was no budget, so you can cook all the nice food Everything that you want to yeah. do. It was, it was really, really good. It was, for fifty, I end up staying there for fifteen years. Usually, I always make it a three-year stay in any job that I go to, mm -hmm. so I can keep on moving and moving up the ladder. Uh, my, I'm now working as a private chef for high-profile clients like Tennis Australia. When they come for Wimbledon, I, um, I basically what I do is that they rent a house, and I organise the house for them from. Uh, Picking up from the airport, uh, barbecue, hiring marquees, um, organizing meetings and everything with them. So that's one of the best high profile clients I've got, you know, and I love it. I really love it. Uh, I'm now working as, pri as a private chef. 
I find that working as a private chef is one of the best moves I've ever made because as a Caribbean chef, being promoted to the high level, it's, a, it, it's daunting. You literally have to prove yourself more than you have to do with your counterpart. All right, so uh, you literally, even when you go for the meeting, you still don't know you're going to get it. And I got sick of people telling me that I was overqualified. What is overqualified? My motto is that I'm not overqualified. You just can't afford me, all right? And and that is the point that I actually, you know, and I came up with that kind of attitude is that, no, I'm not overqualified. I can do whatever job you give me, all right? It's just that you can't afford my wages. And if you can't afford my wages, I don't see the time where I should waste my time trying to convince you that the job is mine. Yeah. And I, I, I find that- I have in, in Wimbledon, yeah. were, you, were you cooking for like all the players or the, the guests or what were you cooking for? We cook for the members. And also some of the players, when they, when they were visiting, we, mm -hmm. They would go to the, the dining room or the coffee shop and then we'll, we'll cater for them there. So like things like Tim Henman, uh, Agassi, all, all these guys we were catering for. When, it's, wow. when it was out of season, at, when, it's, when it's in season, when it's Wimbledon's on, they are all allocated a special unit that they eat from. Right? Although when the Wimbledon was on, I was doing things like uh, cooking for David Beckham, the Queen, uh, because the, I was doing the raw rooms, right? Uh, it was an enjoyment. It was an enjoyment. But you didn't see them, but you knew they were there because uh, the raw room was the... Mm -hmm. To get into the raw box, you had to be invited. You, you just didn't just turn up. You had to be invited. <laughs> uh, the Rolex was that if you bought a Rolex between, I think it was between 15 and 40,000, you got an invite to Wimbledon. So these guys were quite well off. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we see Federer. Federer was always, you know, Federer, when he does his women, then he always got his watch on after the game because Rolex designed a watch for Federer every time he wins Wimbledon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know and that. He, and he wears it. And uh, the cream jacket he actually wears, mm -hmm. that was designed by Rolex as well. Yeah, that's Rolex. That's, Ro that's Rolex the symbol, yeah. the cream, the cream jacket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So I I've done. That. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed that's, my. That, that's that's exciting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And this is the reason why I say what you guys are doing is something that's been well overdue. You know, it's uh, because I find the Caribbean chefs are not recognised in mm -hmm. the UK. Yeah. And you name me for Michelin star chef in the UK, Caribbean, there's, there's a, I think there's probably about yeah. two. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's only about this two, right? And I find that when you've got people like, say for instance, uh, Market Pierre White, if you can Google it on YouTube, doing rice and peas, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. With garden peas, that's an insult to the Caribbean people, right? I, I get your point, yeah. yeah. You know, and I've enjoyed my life as a chef, really enjoyed it, and I would never look back. But you never, you never thought about having your own restaurant and then trying to get a Michelin star, something like that? If I told you how hard it is to get into a restaurant and how hard it is to run a restaurant, all right, I basically I wouldn't go down that line. I, I've wanted to open myself a delic delicatessen. Mm -hmm. after visiting New York, right? But to educate the English in new calorie of art, it's really hard. It's very hard. The youngsters nowadays uh, are good in experimenting for food, but the time would up when I would have opened a, res a restaurant or a calorie of arts, right? It, or a delicatessen or something like that, it would be the time where... Uh, Education the English would, was very hard because don't forget we, they only started tasting frog's legs in two. Uh, I think it was '96 when a um, chef from uh, Lyon came over to the Savoy, did a big party there, and he gave them frog's legs and they all thought it was chicken. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and said to them afterwards, this is a, they said, what was that while we were eating? And he turns around and said, frog's legs. All right. And it was with a watercress sauce. All right. And they were all shocked. Even snails. They only start eating snails. Mm, snails, yeah. Yeah. So you can see, to, uh, for instance, I, I spent a time in Lorette de Mar in Spain. Mm -hmm. And I was working there as a chef in the Oasis Hotel. And I couldn't believe that the English people were coming, flying to Spain and eating the same rubbish that we're eating at home. Like, why do you do that? Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. Stay at home, for Christ's sake. It's cheaper mm. for a start. <laughs> uh, that is true. Yeah, and not only that, they're not venturous. They're not venturous at all. They will come all the way to Spain and then say to them, oh, can I have fish and chips and sausage and mash and stuff like that? And like, why are you in There's Spain? No There's no, There's no point. point you know? yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I have to say, with my, with my traveling, I was able to pick up a lot of ideas which inspired my way of cooking and I would never look back. Knowing knowing that they are they are like that, like not adventurous, not really curious, wasn't it hard for you to do the private chef the private chef um, thing field, like to enter it and then to make them discover your cooking? Not really, because I was selling myself. I I have, I, if I'm on a, I'm on a few platforms, uh, private chef platforms, and I'm on uh, one platform called Take a Chef, and my reviews on there, if you want, if anybody wants to have a look at it, is excellent. I, I'm having, ma ma majority of the clients that actually book me, actually go and view my reviews, and some of them have turned around and said you've got one of the best reviews on the platform. It's because. I'm not selling myself as a Caribbean chef. I'm selling myself as a chef because I love what I do. I don't cook with my mind, I cook with my heart. Right? Uh, and that's just to show that I enjoy what I do as a chef. You know, because it's not a job for me, it's my way of life. You know? I can I also, tell you what I gave, yeah, go on. No, go no, no, on. no, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah. I can tell you what I gave my wife when we first met, right? When you asked me what she Stop. was wearing, I don't have a clue. Okay, that's how, okay. If she has that, she'll divorce me. That's how important it is, I can see. But I also saw that you're doing cooking show. What, what, is, what do you call a cooking show and what, are, what do you do, basically? Yeah, basically what I do, what I'm going to, what I'm starting to do, I'm starting to do YouTubes. Mm -hmm. uh, where I'm teaching people that um, I'm old school. I'm old school cooking. I believe the kitchen basic is having the proper uten utensils to work with, having the, the proper equipment and doing the food the proper way. Like, uh, like I was watching uh, the other day, I was watching people fill it and stuff a chicken breast. And to tell you the truth, I was absolutely gobsmacked, literally gobsmacked, because the way they cut it open and then they put things in it and then they, 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 they uh, we call it panne, which is yeah. with the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's going to fall out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it needs to be in an envelope. So I'm moving into that line where I am going, I'm uh, creating a YouTube channel where I'm actually teaching people the proper way to do things. It's, it's, it's my proper way. It's, I'm not criticizing all the other chefs out there, all right? It's my way, and I think my way is a more of a positive way because we didn't have all the utensils like a, 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 a mincer when I started cooking. Everything was done by hand. Yeah. You, would, you would have a whole side of beef come in and you had to know every single cut. Right, which was very important because you had the rump state, you had the fillet state, you had the, the ribeye state, uh, you had the shoulder. You had to know every single cut. And if you make one wrong cut, that's and money you, down the, yeah, down you, the dust yeah. for hotels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was training, I find that it was one of the best training because training now, it's all about putting flowers on plates. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't, trust me, I'm not criticizing that because that's all chefs. <laughs> 
they, they, that's a new trend. Have their own way. Yeah. But I find that uh, at the present moment is that if uh, chefs are like cattle, if one does it, they all do it. <laughs> and nobody seems to venture off the rails. All right. And like if somebody puts flour, if somebody put flour on a steak down the road oh, two weeks later, yeah. somebody else will put flour on a steak and they're yeah. thinking it's nice. Mm. All right. Uh, worst invention that we ever had in the industry was crushed new potatoes. <laughs> that is the most disgusting dish I have <laughs> ever had in my entire life. Wow, that is uh, strong. <laughs> I, I'm telling you straight. Yeah. Because, there's only one potato you can actually do crush new with, right? And that's Jersey Royals. But that's only got a short season, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then they do it with the uh, uh, the Egyptian new potatoes, okay. right? Where the skin on the new potato is very, very tough. So it's not edible. It's not, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Where with Jersey Royal, because it's, it, yeah, it's edible. Yeah. So when you see a chef doing new potatoes with the Israeli new that, potatoes. You're like, what I'm are not you doing? This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as I say, this that was the worst, worst invention, yeah, invention. ever because my motto was that you're just too lazy to peel the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. don't you think that all those new uh trend and all those new uses still kind of kill the the soul of cooking, like the old way? Yes, yes. Because now nobody makes a demi glace. Mm -hmm. Nobody makes a proper jus. Yeah. Right? Nobody makes a proper stock. Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's all, all dehydrated and then all in boxes and you yeah. can buy everything already made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is the reason why the industry, the, the salary of the industry has literally stood still. It hasn't mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. It's because because now suppliers if you say to a supplier give me a fillet steak they'll give you a fillet steak but they're not cleaning it for you because if mm -hmm. they clean it it means there's money out of their pocket yeah all right so they'll give you all the rubbish right they'll just, just cut the steak and send it mm -hmm. to you all right so when you see it yourself you'll be going oh i've got to take this off i've got to take the senior off i've got to take the bit of fat off when you finish trimming that fillet it's steak Instead of being an eight ounce, all right, it's now a six ounce. By the time you cook it, it's now a four it's ounce. Four, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when you get when the customer gets it, it goes like, "Where's well, where's my steak?" Yeah, right? exactly. So what companies are doing now? They're employing chefs just to cook, not to do any preparation whatsoever, because they'll just buy it in. And they put the yeah. Bill, yeah, and mm. they put the bill on the, on the client. Uh, I worked with a nice with, with a young colored chap in uh, Holborn. I, I, I was brought in to show him how to operate, how to, how to do food costing, how to do margin, how to work out his, uh, how to order in and everything, because he was always over ordering. And he was the most obnoxious guy I've ever met. Right? <laughs> and I find that the youngsters nowadays, they, they all want to be head chef. They all want to be uh, film stars wow. because because that's what you see chefs. on TV. That's yeah. what they see on TV. They're giving the wrong, wrong information out there, right? Yeah. Uh, I love Golden Ramsay. I do love him. I've met him. I've talked to him. I've cooked for him. All right. When I worked at uh, Reed's Business Information, we used to have a magazine out there called the Caterer Her Hotel Keeper. And that was the head office. And so I've cooked for people like uh, Albert Rue, uh, Raymond Blanc, uh, Gary Rowe, Golden Ramsey. I've cooked for all of these guys when they come to visit and they do their little celebrity talk on the on the magazine, right? And Ramsey was the Ramsey Albert Rowe was the only two people that would come in the kitchen and say, "Thank you very much, Chef." All the others were like, "Oh yeah, I'm a celebrity chef. So what? You don't know, need and, you, yeah. Don't need you, you know." And uh, so. My career as a chef has been a, a good one and also an eye opener because nowadays uh, I find that all the young up and coming chefs 
they all want to be celebrity chefs. They all want to be master chefs. They all want to be Michelin star chefs, but none of them know the basic. So they'll go to a Michelin star restaurant to learn Michelin star food, right? And they'll only create and they'll only move forward as a Michelin star chef, right? But they don't understand being a Michelin star chef is that you not only have to have the staff because you're having uh, for probably to put one plate together, you've got eight chefs just to do that one dish. So you have uh, the, the the garnish, you have the the sauce, sauce. you have it's 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 all whole it's all stuff, yeah. Um, militarized basically to put together. So you you but once you lose a star, once you lose a Michelin star, that's fifty percent of your business gone. Because people, if you've got if you got two Michelin star, people are coming to your restaurant for two Michelin star that's standard. True, yeah. If you lose one Michelin star and you've got one Michelin star, so basically that's fifty percent of your business you've lost. That is out, yeah. So the stress that comes with having a Michelin star restaurant is literally actually out of this world. It's daunting, right? Uh, I would never put myself in that position. Yeah, I was about to ask if that's the reason why you didn't. No, nah, I would never do it. I I I. I do enjoy what I do now, right? I also travel with Tennis Australia yeah. to do the Davis Cup, which is the equivalent to a uh, Tennis World Cup. Well, yeah. And we've, we've traveled to Uzbekistan. We've traveled to Brazil, right? Basically what I do is that I would go along with them. And uh, so if they need a chef or they need something, I'm always on standby to help them out. And Uzbekistan was, oh, what's this? Have I lost connection? No, 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 we can show you. Back? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No, <laughs> something came up saying I was, I was connected, it was long. Yeah, so basically, I travel with them for the Davis Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we travel all over the world. So I enjoy. So as a private chef since 2012 and to present, mm -hmm. I've never looked back. That was one of the best moves. So you never miss no, the heat uh, of the kitchen, like you know that that heat when you have the I, I, all the the. I miss the atmosphere. Yeah, I do miss the atmosphere. That's something that you know I'll never get out of my system, but I don't miss all the stress that comes with it. All right. <laughs> I, I also nowadays I find young chefs because Golden Ramsay swears and f and blinds and everything. They all think they have to do. Same. They all think they have to do exactly the same. <laughs> That's true. Even in France, because yeah. because they they're doing the same show, the same show that the Ramsey is doing. They're yeah. doing the same one in France, and it's the same. Like everybody thinks that this is how a kitchen is supposed to work, but it is not. It is not. But due to TV TV shows and everything, I think it's kind of it's kind of putting our, our work down because everybody think it's easy. You just have to do, just have to do um, easy stuff. And then I don't know that the image they are showing is completely wrong. Yeah, it is. It is wrong. I always say they shouldn't put people in the army. Mm -hmm. they, should people, they should put people in the hospitality industry. Yeah, because right? it's, yeah, it's kind of the same. And then they will know how stressful the, the hospitality industry is you don't go into the hospitality industry because it's a job you go in there because you love what you're doing right and if you go if you do it as a job then basically at the end of the day it just shows that you're not capable of doing anything yourself you know and this is the one of the reasons why I, I enjoy what I do and working as a private chef I find that it's one of the best move because simple reason I can actually present my food to the client, right? And I know that they're gonna enjoy it, you know? And because I'm putting myself on the plate, I'm not putting the food. So when the client eats that, they eat in my heart, right? Because they know my heart went into that dish to create that dish for them. How you how you define your your food, your cooking style? How do you I use a lot of herbs and spices. Uh, from all of all over the world that I've I've actually visit, uh, I I stick to the same quality of portions that I would give when I started as a chef. Because I find now the new the new style of catering is that 
they'll get a duck breast and they'll cut it in half and they'll give it to a client. I don't. I believe there's uh, the starter should be one seventy five grams. Main course should be three fifty. That's uh, two hundred for your protein and yeah. everything else is the veg and the sauce. Yeah. And I also and uh, and one seventy five for the dessert, right? And to me, having that quantity of food and that in that in that portion size makes you completely, you know, happy with what you've eaten, right? It's no point having a paying 75, 80 pounds for a meal, right? And then you say, well, I'm still hungry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is this is the reason why I say the catering industry are like cattle, because we are all majority now, everybody wants to be a celebrity chef, everybody wants to be a Michelin star chef, but nobody wants to be a chef. Right. The Which hard really, work and the hardship yeah. and the stress and yeah. everything that goes with it. You know, and they think effing and blinding at people makes them do the job better and it doesn't. Yeah. You know, I I worked with one young guy, I did a casual job in Hampton Court, and that was a, that was one of the first experiences I actually had with somebody effing and blinding at me. And I was working on the fish section and he came up to me and said to me, effing chef, when, when's this effing salmon going to effing happen? I literally and the, took up my apron off, went round to the line where he was calling the orders at. And I said to him, there's my apron. I see you later. And he says to me, well, well, we, you can't go through halfway through service. I said, look, I'm casual. I don't have to stay there. I don't have to be abused by you. I don't have to work with you. So there's my apron. Right, I see you later. All right, and as I was walking out, one of the guys came around and said, "You're the first person that actually stood up to him." I said, "Well, you guys should stood up to him because he can't talk to you like this." Yeah. No. And he called the agency and said to the agency, "We're not paying him." And the agency called me. I was on the train going home. He called me and said, "What did you do that for?" I said, "Well, I don't pay to be abuse. All right, I pay to work. All right, and if you're going to abuse me, I'd rather walk out than have a fight with you. All right, and lower my standards." All right, and they said, Well, they're not going to pay. I said, Look, to tell the truth, for I don't need the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can keep it. Uh, it was, it was uh, the reason I walked out, it was my principle, it's what I felt I should do. All right, if I stayed there, I probably would have lost my temper, uh, end up in hospital, end up in prison doing something stupid. So, just by offering him my apron, showed him that he cannot abuse me, right, for doing the same job. And I think a lot of chefs need to stand up and do that, right? Because there's, you cannot swear at people in it, hoping that people are going to do a better job for you because it's not going to happen, you know? And when I was executive chef, I always turned around and said, if anybody had an argument in my kitchen, I would lock him in my office, right? <laughs> and say to them, look, you've got two choices. Both of you have got two choices, right? You sort yourself out and get back on the floor and work, or one of you have to go. Because if you two can't work with each other, then one of you have to go. And I had the, one of the best attitudes because simply I didn't want people fighting in the kitchen. I wanted everybody to be working as a team. And we're not a team. We're actually a family, right? Uh, uh, because you see that same person for eight hours a day, even more, right? And nothing worse than having a bad feeling about each other, right? And that's what I used to do when I was exec executive chef. I locked him in my office and said to him, sort yourself out and walked away. <laughs> you know, you know what you're saying I think is... I have... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go on, go on, go on. No, I was about to say go what on. you're saying is really important because I think uh, we are not taught enough about the, the, human, the human part of the... the, the of our jobs, our work, because the human part is really important. You cannot manage manage um, a kitchen, a staff, without um, taking in consideration their feelings and then how yeah. the atmosphere is. Because once there is one argument, everybody, like the whole atmosphere is changing. I experienced it at yeah. work myself. Like if you let people uh, having bad tempers or fights each other, then everything, the atmosphere, the whole service is troubled, you know? Yeah. So what you're saying is really important because I think this is something that is lacking when we are when we are yeah. taught cooking, actually. It's a skill to yeah. have, like the management of human, human, the human part. 
Yeah. The thing is, if you can't manage your team, you should not be in the industry full stop uh, because team management and team leadership is one of the most important thing in the industry, right? And if your team, if you have one bad apple in your team, right, half of your team is bad apple because half of your team are listening to all the rubbish that goes that this one person is spreading yeah. about one another person oh, and yeah, exactly. they need to stop this from the from the from the start because if you don't well any business any business then they've always got one bad apple who spreads gossip right and i was one person in my when i had when i had my team no gossip right and i would sit down with my team and eat right mm -hmm. we have a meeting Every day we have a meeting, we, we, we come in, we sit down, we have coffee, everybody sit down and have coffee, we have a sandwich, and we sit down with, and we talk about the day, right? That, I find that really relaxed, it, relaxed the team during the day, because everybody knew exactly what they were doing, right? And everybody relied on everybody else to do their job, so that they can do their job. And I find out, if you're going to do an uh, executive chef or a head chef in any industry, a meeting every morning or every day, right, will bring the team together. It's very important to bring your team together, right? Okay. And I also also saw that you're doing photography. So yes. How, how... I'm, actually, I'm actually in my studio. Yeah. So can you yeah. tell us about that? How did you go from being a chef to being a photographer? Uh, I love photograph. I love... Uh, food uh when i got made redundant for because in 2012 the reason i left the old england tennis club is because i had a motorbike accident and i had to have a knee replacement do not feel sorry because <laughs> i was in the position where i was working we started off in-house catering i did that for 15 years for the all england tennis club which is like the all england was paying my wages and then in 2012, we moved on to the contract caterers, which is Compass. I have nothing against Compass whatsoever, but uh, the standards of cooking that they wanted to introduce, I didn't want to do that because it wasn't me. It wasn't my soul. They wanted me to cook with second rate food and still produce high quality. And that's not me. And if I can't enjoy what I do, it's time for me to move on. Yeah. yeah. And so basically in 2012, I had a motorbike accident in March and I had a knee replacement. But I think somebody up there was looking after me because they're saying, you're not happy where you are, so it's time to move on. Uh, so they said to me, oh, we're not going to keep you on. Uh, we're going to make you redundant. So I said, well, give me my money then. Let me go. <laughs> and I sat for about, because I couldn't do much for a year on the knee. So I sat around bored doing what I can and I said to I said to the wife I said what do I do you know and she said to me well you like cooking so private chefing I said okay that's one move but the private chef I only do that three times a week right so the rest of the week I need to do something else that I enjoy as well yeah. and that's when I became into food photography and I find out there's a lot to learn within the food photography industry as well uh like food styling people think oh it's a mobile phone i'll take a picture and put it on my website and it says like but you need to know your lighting your um how to present the food to make it look nice because there's three categories of food there's a the restaurant food which is the kind which is going to go into a restaurant website there's rustic which is the housewives right and there's publishing all right, so basically it's going to go into a magazine. So that's got to pop out to the client and say, look, oh yeah, I, I want to buy this. I want to eat this, all right? And that's the three categories and I had to learn all of that. So I do food styling as well, you know? I enjoy what I do. I do enjoy what I do, you know? I'm in my studio at the moment. I was doing a burrito last night. Yeah. Did it, did it help you improve your skills? in the kitchen like the the fact that you're doing the those photograph yeah uh it's not only helped me improve it helps me it did help me to also understand the the, the categories of what makes the eye uh food appealing to the eye right because people think that we eat with our eyes and our minds but it's not 
we eat with our eyes, our tongues, and our stomach. All right. So basically, your palate can only taste four items. All right, at a time. So anything more than four items, your your whole uh, palate is just confused of what you're eating. This is the reason why I like all my food to to be. The Oriental. I'll give you a fine example. The Oriental are the best creative of food I have ever ever met in my entire life. All right. If you eat an Oriental food, all right, you can taste every single item that's within that dish. So you can taste the peppers, you can taste the black bean sauce, you can taste the prawns, you can taste the beef, you can taste every element that's within that dish. And they were the ones I actually oper uh, I actually uh, created some of my standards on as well. That is Hong Kong for a year. And uh, the, the food is a part of life, not like the UK. Food is like a way of life for us, right? Food in, uh, in for India and uh, and um, uh, Oriental people is a way of is is a is a way of life for them, right? It's a meaning, right? The way you they cut the peppers is a meaning. You cut it the other way, you know. Uh, it's it's like an old, it's like a little bit like the Caribbean people the, uh with us and our omen, right? If somebody sends something to us, we think it's an omen. It's a it's a demon that's coming to us, right? Well. Food to the Chinese and the Indians are exactly the same thing. It has the meaning of the way they cut it and the way they present it. And that's, that, that was one of the things I actually took away from Hong Kong. And I, and I loved it. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, did you, because when I was researching like all your work and stuff, I, can, I saw you in France, like it was possible to book you in France. Did you did you ever went there? Did you cook there? Like your the apotheca chef, you know. You listed no, take, as a chef in France as well. No, take a chef is uh, they have an op the, the office is not in the UK. The office is in France and America. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, what they do, you see some stuff come up in French, but it's mm -hmm. not actually yeah. But I, I wasn't in France because I was like, oh, maybe we can we can book Chef Darius in France, and I was like, yeah. this is weird because you can still book me. I do travel. <laughs> <laughs> so will you come? Will you come to Africa? Will you come here? Oh, look, is this something the, that you want to to do? If the price is right, I will travel. Okay. Trust me. Right? Okay. I've actually uh, I've actually uh, traveled to uh, Germany to do a, a little celebration. Uh, basically, I was selling a product, right, for a client, and they wanted somebody like sous vide machine, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is the water bath mach uh, machine. I have a big industrial one, which I use all the time for with, when I do all my cooking uh, for private chef and whatever. And uh, they wanted because I use I use mine quite a lot. They wanted me to go to Germany and show people how to use it. Right, the language barrier was a bit of a. Uh, Daunting, although my wife is German and I, I speak very little German. <laughs> right. But I had a translator with me, so it wasn't too bad. Right. But uh, yeah, it's 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 the way to, it's the way to move, you know, it's the way to go, you know. So because um, our one of our our goal is to be able to, you know, do some exchange like with the chefs. We go, they come. So you told me earlier that you went to South Africa and you liked it too. So, Will you be interested to come to West Africa as well? Yes, yes. If if the thing is, I'm I'm I don't mind traveling. I travel anyway. Um, as I said to you, when I go on holiday with the family, I always go to. I always eat where the locals eat. It's because it's not. You don't travel a long distance to get pizzas and soft chicken sautés. You go to. You don't go to Italy to have a a, a Mexican burrito. Right, you go to Italy because you love eat Italian food. You know, I have one of the best Italian recipes, right, from a housewife in Italy, right, for bolognese, pasta, pizza, and I still use this recipe now, right. And when basically how we met is I was in I went to Rome, but because I go on the outskirts of the of the town and lit and watch what I walk past his family in having. Uh, their meal it was like two o'clock in the afternoon 
and they had the whole table laid out, you know, with uh, pasta, you know, you name it, they had it all out. And I walked past and I went, oh, that looks very nice. And the next minute, the mother's come up to me and grabbed me and said to me, do you want to join us? All right? And I said, well, too right. You know? <laughs> and she said to me, what do you do in the UK? And I said to her, well, I'm a chef and I'm looking for ideas. I said to me, I said to her, this tomato sauce is the best tomato sauce I've ever tasted. All right? I said to me, so what, how do you cook your tomato sauce in the UK? I said, 30 minutes and it's off the stove. She goes, no, 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 no. Four and a half hours. She cooks oh. tomato sauce for, yeah. Wow. Bolognese sauce, yeah. Bolognese sauce is cooked for three and a half hours or more because of the texture, yeah. She makes her own tomato passata and then bottle it. Yeah. All right. Okay. And it was an eye, very, very eye opener. She makes all the fresh pasta. She's got like a, a wooden table. Yeah, to do with, it, yeah. With her, like, it's Sell like a it. stick. Mm -hmm. right? And she rolls all her own pasta. And I'm like, wow, this is just like. And then when I when I when she gave me the recipe and I came back to the UK, I tried to master it, and I, and now I've got it down to the precise. And I tell you awesome. what, when I cook when I do bolognese for the family here, I start at twelve o'clock in the afternoon so that we can eat for six. Yeah. That's that's something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will send you the recipe. I will yeah, send you the recipe. I would like to. I would really like yeah, to try it. Yeah. I would like to. Because I love cooking for my family too, so I would love to do it. I would yeah. love to try and do it. Yeah. I have also the sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. Nobody's actually had my recipe. <laughs> yeah, it's and yours. When you make the recipe, I'll send you the the, the line is broken. I'll send you that as well. I'll send you that. You actually, Ginger. The line is breaking. We can't really hear you. Hello. Hello. I, I think it is by uh, my path. I have to to ask some to ask yeah, some questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chef Darius. Are you here? Okay, good. You're back. You need to to um, unlock your microphone. You are on mute. Okay, I think the thing is still frozen. Avan, Avan, can good. you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I have to give the. <laughs> Give the microphone to Francis. He has some questions for you. Yes, yes, it is my part. I have a, I have a few questions for you, Chef Darius. Uh, do you hear me? Because your, your, Looks your like screen is, uh, is freezing. It's frozen again. So my question is, and I, I will I will send the, the question directly by uh, by uh, by uh, by message mm -hmm. to uh, to the chef to the chef. Sorry, my question: Is it hard to be a black chef in UK, or is it hard to be a chef in UK? Okay, he's back. You're on mute. Okay, good. Got me? Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. We're supposed to have one of the best networks going out there, which is Virgin, <laughs> and we haven't problems. But it, it, it is not. It is not. <laughs> but, the, best West, the best network is in Abidjan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is, uh, it is uh, on silver. The expensive one. Okay. <laughs> okay, Chef Darius, is it hard to be a black chef or is it hard to be a chef in UK? What is the difference for you? What is the... What is the... It's, it's hard. 
it's hard to be a black chef in the UK because it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, right? The whole catering industry is because uh, I find that when I was moving up the ladder, uh, yeah. it was more difficult for me to go for an interview, right, than my counterpart. They would get the job. Regardless, they knew what they were doing, they would still get the job, but I would have to prove myself more, yeah. right? Uh, and also, on top of that, I find that as well, the salary difference between the counter, my counterpart and, my, and, and the Black Caribbean was of, of very high in our margin, right? Uh, I would, I'll give you a fine example. I worked at the Landmark Hotel as a night chef, and then I went from a night chef to a day chef. And one of the guys, he was a, he was a sous chef. He came in as a sous chef, didn't have a clue what he was doing, right? And he took over the room service, right? Instead of, I should have been taking it over, right? And he asked me, he says, what do you do during the night? And I said to him, this is what I do. When I was doing a night chef, there's only one of me. When I left the night chef, there was two chefs doing exactly the same job that I was doing yeah. with one of me. Mm-hmm. And I find out the uh, majority of uh, black chefs in the, in the UK have to prove themselves and they have more work than actually the counterpart himself. And I showed this uh, guy to do crisp, you know, fresh crisp. We used to have fresh vegetable crisp and potato crisp. And the guy came up to me and said to me, he says to me, uh, can you do the crisp and the vegetable crisp today? I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I emptied my fryer. I got everything ready, got all my vegetables all cut, all my fruit all cut. And he says to me, is that the way Vortex do it? And I went, no, that's the way I taught Vortex to do it because I was the night chef at the time. And Vortex was a Polish guy who came over uh, and he was looking for work. And I showed him how to, to do the crisp, the vegetable crisp and everything. And he said to me, well, why didn't you tell me how it was done? I said, because you're the sous chef and I'm just a chef at the party. Why am I telling you what to do? You should be telling me what to do. All right. So he took me off the section and put me on the banquet. <laughs> because I, 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 I don't want, I don't like stepping on people's toes. Right. But I only work with people that can actually teach me. And if you can't teach me, then I, I'm wasting my time with you. And I'm a big, I, I'm a big believer in that for myself. Uh, if I'm out to better myself, and I'm working for somebody who doesn't know and doesn't know how to cook, I'm not going to cook his way. I'd rather leave. I'd rather leave the premises and find myself another job. But it is hard for a black Caribbean in the UK to work as a chef. Okay. Uh, uh, do you have any, um, any association, any, um, any professional uh, 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 any, 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 what is, uh, un groupe professionnel pour les chefs? Any, uh, black, uh, black, uh, community? A black platform, chef. black community platform, a black community group. No, I don't. This is the reason why I said your ideas are one of the best ideas that's been out there at the moment, right? Because you, you have nowhere a Caribbean or a black chef can actually go and express their, their, their interests, right? Uh, you, there, there is nothing, there is, there is literally, there's nothing out there. There's, there's this, uh, uh, there's a black platform on Facebook, uh, black businesses, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's a lot of other businesses in, yeah. involved. It's not a like restaurant. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to do with hospitality at all, right? It's just other businesses. It's random businesses, yeah. yeah. So basically your platform to do with the, with the hospitality industry is, one, is, is, is a really good platform to be on. And I wish you guys all the best for the future because it's it's been well well overdue, well overdue that uh, the Caribbean and not only Caribbean, the African, the Blacks uh, are recognised for their job and their duties. You know, because it's it is very very hard, very very hard. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm because I'm old school. I've I've had the experience. I'm not saying it's racist. Trust me, I'm not saying there is races in the industry. There's races in every industry, right? But there is more uh, people holding black, good black chefs down because simply is that they'd rather give it to somebody else because regardless of what they know, right? Because there is a lot of uh, 
uh, I would say white chefs out there, even ethnic chefs or from other countries who has no idea about cooking whatsoever, right? But they would get the head chef job before a Caribbean or a black chef would get it, which is quite very sad, really. Mm -hmm. And I find there is a lot of black chefs out there, a lot of black chefs, right? Not Ainsley Harriet, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right? But there is a lot of black chefs out there, which I find that for them to move up the ladder and they have to prove themselves, right? And once they've proved themselves, right, they, they're still held back. You know, and your platform is one of the, uh, uh, you know, when, when you, when I was contacted about, can you do something about it? I didn't have to, I didn't have to think, you know, I said, yes, it's a good platform to be on. And if you guys can move it forward, which I'd be happy to join you guys, you know, and move it forward, it'll be one of the best things, best things, you know. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay, I, I, I have a question from Patty from Canada. Uh, what are your favorite meals from your travel experiences? What is, what is your favorite meal from your travel experience? My favorite, my, my favorite meal from travel experience was in Italy. When I met that, when, when, oh, when right. I met that mother and she actually experienced me and said to me, no, Things do not take five minutes to cook. Things take time. Time, and yeah. If you love food, right, you should not rush it. Right. And she was she, she was an eye-opener for me. She helped me understand that good food takes time to cook. So if you want to eat, if you go to a restaurant and you want to eat fast, don't come to that restaurant. Go to McDonald's. These are the people <laughs> that will be happy to help you. <laughs> yeah? Okay, we, we have we have three minutes left. I think, uh, uh, Alison, uh, you can you can finish and uh, you can uh, you can close the webinar soon. With, just uh, uh, just last one last minute. one last question: mm. Did you plan on writing writing a book? Because that's actually I'm interested in that question. Did you plan on writing a book of everything I, you learned and everything I have you know? Over two, I have over two thousand recipes which yeah. I would like to put together. Uh, I just haven't had the, the uh, how could you say, the goal to, to put it together. I'm, I, have to, uh, I have to say to you as well that my wife has actually said to me, right, when I cook, you don't, when, you, when we ask you a recipe, you just say, yeah, that, 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 right? So I said to her, I said, when I die, you're going to have all my recipes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still waiting for the tomato sauce recipe, though. I'd I, like if, to have this one. If you send me a link, I will, I'll be happy to send that over to you. That's no yes. problem at all. Okay, yeah? okay. Uh, I, would, I would also like to, be, to say that I would like to continue with you guys. Uh, so, uh, if I can, if it, if I could be nominated as, uh, as to be on the sideline yeah. uh, and, and join the group, you know, regularly, sure. Uh, sure. I would be happy, happy to do so because I think you guys have got a really good platform, and it needs to be promoted more. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we will be really happy to have you too. I mean. I know that we're looking forward to have chefs like you working with us and actually helping us improving everything. So yeah, we'll yeah. be glad to have yeah. you working with us. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, 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 it'll be a real, real good pleasure for me. I'll be happy to do it. Great. Right? That because is great. I find that we need this. We really absolutely need it. We do. Yeah. So we're about to finish. I'd like to thank you, Chef Darius, for your time, yeah. for everything you you putting together for your work. Thank you very much. Yeah, and then we're looking pleasure. forward to. I mean, we're staying in touch, and then we're looking forward to work with you. Yeah, it would be a pleasure, and I will stay on. I'll be welcome to stay on that platform. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. You guys okay. Stay. Thank you yeah. very much, Chef Darius. I will okay. come to UK after the COVID nineteen. <laughs> yeah. It's possible. <laughs> Listen, when you're in the UK, you give me a shout. We'll meet up yes, and we'll something to eat, Good. yeah? Good. Definitely. Thank you. Okay, you okay. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.